it is a very very special day today it's a very historic day today that a person who has seen the entire lifespan of independent of india with his keen sensitive eyes and has reflected upon it is amongst us today it is very kind and generous of him that in spite of his not so good health although he is keeping very good health but he finds a little difficult to walk but his spirit is so high he is so dignified in his you know gestures and generosity that i'm really falling short of words if i fumble please forgive me he has of course we have you know heard what dr barad has told us and also you must have been googling it and reading about all his achievements he has given us a lot i would not really stand in between you and him i can only share with you that people like him his generation is so giving is so generous that they really 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 want to share what they achieve what they think what they reflect upon they really feel the urge the need to share with all of us that's what keeps them going that's what brings him here and fortunately with us today is his wife mrs bhanu padamsi who is also a writer and she has edited the book which has been brought out by mark uh, mark publication in our collaboration with pandol art gallery and she has also written the preface that book is available outside uh, on sale for 2900 rupees and if anybody wants to buy it mr padamsi will be very happy to sign it and there are original lithographs available if somebody wants to buy they are also available there are reprints also available and memorabilia available I want to comment that this sculpture was made by Bakre S K Bakre, who was a member of the Progressive Artist Group. I was in the School of Art at that time, and he said, uh, "You must come to my studio. I want to do a portrait of yours." In this image, the first is Susa, Raza, and myself. It was in my hotel room in Boulevard de Mopanas. This is one of the first paintings I done in Paris, uh, and uh, there is history to this, because uh, in the Journal Art, that is the newspaper arts, uh, they put an announcement that Andre Breton, who is a very famous surrealist writer and poet, was going to be the jury, and they said that don't sign the painting. We don't want to know the name of the artist or anything about him. You just on a separate piece of paper, you mark your name and address. So I I I sent the painting uh, to the show. So did Raza send it. And um, a, a few days later, I got a telegram that you have got the third prize for this painting. And those were the first two or three paintings I done in Paris. And was, I was hardly there for a month or two. So I got quite a shock, you know, that um, in the first three months I, I am going to meet Andre Breton. So uh, when I went to the Journal Art. Uh, the exhibition uh, i introduced myself and andre pito asked me how old are you so i said i'm 22 he said my god you're a child <laughs> you won the third prize with him so he said please let him have the whole prize you know he was so afraid that it would come in the papers and louis pavel so the editor of the journal art told me that as you're the youngest i'll give you the largest reproduction in my paper we can go to the next step And this is another painting, which has a short history. <clears throat> it was bought by R. D. Pierre Rocher, who was one of the big collectors of Picasso, Matisse, Marcel Duchamp, especially Marcel Duchamp. And uh, he, he he bought this painting from an exhibition I had at Gallery Cruz in Paris. And he told the dealer that ask him to come to my house on Saturday. So I went there. So he showed me that I put your painting between Picasso and Braque. How do you like it? I said, of course, I'm very honoured by this. So he said, now every week on Saturday you must come to my house, and I'll show you a number of paintings. Especially I'll show you the works of Marcel Duchamp. Marcel Duchamp had done six spheres, spheres, which turned round, 
and when the spirit turned around, you saw all sort of images, and there's history to this. He suddenly thought that the common man should be interested in my work, so he hired a stall at Boulevard d'Italie. There are many stalls were there, and he said, "I'm going to. We've taken a stall for one week. I'm going to turn this thing, and I'll see how the common man reacts." And so Ranjit uh, Roshe said that after two three days, he, he went to meet him, and uh, he he walked him from a distance. Nobody stopped to see this work. So he went to him and he told Dusha that you're wasting your time. I don't think this interests anybody from the from the people who walk around. So please close your stall and come with me. I'm buying all the six spheres. And he showed me these six spheres. You know, they were absolutely superb. But the amazing thing was that uh, such a great artist as Marcel Duchamp, who wanted to, uh, you know, share his art with the common man, he hired a stall. So that the people walking up and down the metro station would watch, nobody stopped. So uh, Ravi Pierre Roche told him that I'm buying all the six. You come with me to my house. This is a painting for which I was arrested by the Bombay police. Uh, uh, on the opening day, uh, a, a gentleman came in civil and said that I want photographs of this painting. I said I have no photographs. Fortunately, I didn't have them. Uh, but if you are a journalist, you can pick up other photographs from the table. Uh, when he left, uh, I had a friend who was a lawyer who came to me and asked me what did he say. It's some crazy fellow who wanted photographs only this many. He said that crazy man is Inspector Kanga from CID. I said, my God. So he, he said uh, he will come back perhaps tomorrow. And he did come back in the morning the next day. And but I was expecting him. And all night I was thinking about this problem also. That I said there will be some problem. So he came and told me that under Section 292 IPC, I want these paintings to be removed. So I said I'm not going to remove them. So he said, "You are disobeying the police." I said, "The police is an only an agent of the law. You are not the judge. A court, a law court can order me to remove the painting, but you are just an agent of the, of, of the law. You are not. You are not a judge." So he said, "Anyway, here is a notice, and uh, I'll come tomorrow. If you are not removed, it I'll put you under arrest." I said, "Fine, go. No, you can go." So he came the next day. I had not removed it, and I had a letter ready for him. That I'm not removing the painting. Though my lawyer told me that uh, if you lose this case, you might have to go to six months imprisonment or a, a very heavy fine. So he said that uh, unless your elder brother uh, tells me to go ahead, I would not take the risk because he'll blame me for having uh, lost your case. So my brother came. My brother was quite an extraordinary person, very well read, and he said there's no question of removing it. We were able to fight it out, so I was arrested, and it took nine months or a year. I, I won the case in the lower court, but they went into appeal against the judgment. And in the high court, uh, I'm glad it went to the high court because the high court said that the police, the an art gallery, is out of bounds for the police. An art gallery is institution itself; it's like a church. You can't enter there and make your own law. If this painting was exhibited on the road or in, in any hall, the police could interfere, but not in an art gallery. So this is standard judgment for any artist who is exhibiting in an art gallery. But unfortunately, what has happened that the art gallery itself now prevents people from showing paintings. They they become moral judges themselves. And in in recent times, not recent from from the last 10-20 years, Shiv Sena. Uh, my some photographs I had taken were shown in a gallery, and they started throwing stones. So the artist said, "Why do we?" They said, "Why we put these nudes? You remove them, otherwise we'll break your windows." So they are uh, become the you know, judges of morality. Now, in those days, in the 50s, there was no Shiv Sena, but now 
these are the people who, who lay down the laws of morality. We can go. On, we can work. <coughs> This was one other painting in the exhibition, which was also seized by the police. The same painting which was on the invitation card. Here uh, I am on the first, Souza, Raza and Saxon Pai.
it's in an astronomical term. If several star, stars are in a straight line, you call that zigzagging. So, I was do, doing a kind of a program, uh, which also was in some way uh, based upon straight lines. You know? So I thought that would be an apt title for my film. Sizig was the film.
itna meditative uh, display of artwork and such a long journey it's self explanatory now i think we should invite questions because mr padam si doesn't like to speak much during his you know uh, presentation he wanted all of you to uh, really uh, get into the uh, works and then respond and he he would really welcome the because he's very keen about the question answer session my question is that what is it so, what is so profound about nudity that it 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 enters every form of art be it sculptures paintings or any other form of art uh, i'd like to attempt this question i don't know i mean if i'm the right person to do it but uh, when i saw this movie uh, agony in ecstasy michael angelo was asked, asked the same question that why why are you painting people, people nude because back then it was it was very obscene so he answered he answered that i want to make them as god made them like in a pure state and it's it's not obscene it's it's the purity and i want to make them like that i mean i mean i'm not maybe i'm answering it rightly or not but this is what the master said sir main ye puchna se bhi jivein tusi badi der baad painting dekhde ho bhi jehdi present tusi complete kar dinde si painting nu te us baad badi der baad dekhde ho ki oh tonu fir incomplete lagdi si sir bhi oh complete na lagdi ho fir dwar to dekhan to baad jehdi present complete kiti hui painting hai sir future ch ja ke dekhe jivein ajj bhi tusi dekh rahe ho tonu koi incomplete lagi painting sir that you painted so many canvases and made drawings and whatever like have you ever felt that a, a painting which you made earlier that it is incomplete no all painting is complete uh, the last phase again you know has nudes uh, nudes are a major recurring theme uh, in your work um, but you know my my question is different the other other recurring theme in your work um, is what you call meta scapes they are not even landscapes um they are abstractions of a different kind there's a kind of magical quality to them you call them meta scapes so on the one hand there is this uh, solidity of the nude uh when it comes to the human figure um and you know there are no clothes there's nothing to hide it i think your lines are not only bold but very thick uh on the other hand when it comes to painting nature um you know your colors um are very bold but lines are not thick um you know there there's much greater abstraction out there so you know i i see these two things uh coming one after the other alternately uh in your work throughout and i see the treatment very different uh when it comes to the human figure your lines are thick and bold you know they are like um, outlined the colors are outlined very sharply uh, whereas uh in painting nature you kind of abstract it much more so, um, i don't know i mean it's, it's a comment it's not a question but i mean since it occurs time and again maybe you would like to say something on that this painting have been done over the last 60 years i'm 83 now so i have removed 23 years it's better student days you know so uh, over 60 years so there's bound to be change you know you can't paint the same way all the time and one changes also in japan i heard that every 10 years the artist <coughs> changes his name hokusai was the last name of the japanese the great japanese painter and the historians don't know what his early work was like because he went on changing his name in his address also that he was to burn the house where he was living in and go to a new house and when they asked him why did you burn the house he said it was very dirty it couldn't give it back to the land lot in this condition so i burned the house so hokusai was the last name that was for only for 10 years work they don't know what is earlier work was like so change i mean you may keep the same name the same passport but you're not the same person every 10 years you change or 10 or 15 years any time you like in japan they say every 10 years so there's a lot of uh, uh, over the last few uh, your works i have seen over the spanning last so many years and uh, you have shifted from black and white grays to sepia as to color i would just like to ask do you think in color first and then the form occurs or is it the form that makes the color i don't change from black and white to color i wait in color then i think only in color 
the first stroke is color and the last stroke is color. But if I work with black and white, it's first to last is black and white. And I only work with black. I think the things that are there, it's all done with lines, you know, all the lithographs and all the done lines. I want to ask that how have you tackled the question of morality all your life, sir? Because you have uh, been criticized many times because of new nude paintings. So the question of morality, how uh, you have tackled all your life, sir? How am, who am I to tackle that thing? <laughs> <laughs> when I looked at your metascape specially, and other color canvases. I experienced a lot of luminosity in the colors. You know, it didn't matter whether it was whatever, it was primary or whatever, but I, there was a lot of glow in there. That's something which struck me as very good. Thank you. Mr. Padam was very humble. He didn't share with you that he has shared a lot of um, space and experiences with some of the greatest of the artists of the 20th century, like, you know, Marcel Duchamp, Jai Kometi, and André Breton. He, when, when he was there in Paris, he asked him, he bought, bought the work of his, and then he invited him to his place. When he reached, what he saw was his painting was placed between a Picasso painting and his Master Duchamp's home. Then he asked him, can I write? Yeah. Then he asked him that now onwards, you keep on painting, and you come to me every month with your work of art. I'll look at it, and don't show your work for the rest of the five years. And then I will open your show. I'm a very great collector uh, who, who bought one of my paintings. He sat in the house and up the fifth Saturday, he said, now don't hold an exhibition for the next five years. And after five years, I will open your show and I will make you world famous. Now, um, that was when I was about 24, 25. And it was a catastrophe. You know, I formed a brother who is a very good friend of mine, and I we had gone to Paris with him, and I told him the disaster. He said, what happened? He said, this fellow wants me not to exhibit for five years, and after that he will launch me. So he said, this is success, you made it. I said, for me it is a disaster, because I want to spend my life working and discovering things. I don't want him to launch me in five years' time. You know. I want to live my life. What is the use of this idiotic success? You know? So this is the thing, the decision I made. Uh, then I said, uh, I did not dare tell him this. But I held an, another show with Raza, and I gave him a call that I'm having my show, and would be happy if you come. You just put the phone down. And he never came to the show. But this was not a loss for me. I, it was victory for me. Because uh, this kind of material success would have destroyed me completely. And I remember al was there at the time in Paris. And I told him this. He said, you did very well. You didn't destroy it completely and you accepted this. <laughs> because he would have tried to guide you. He said, this is the way you know, this, 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 is, this will lead you to success. But uh, these are very tempting offers, you know, like, you know, what is success? Success is not because some collector is going to buy all your works. You have to live your life, you have to experience your life. That is success. Even, if, if, even, when, I was, if, even, even when I was arrested by the police uh, for this obscenity thing, uh, Rudy von Leiden was the critic of Times of India. <clears throat> he said that, uh, Akbar, I hope you win this case. So I said, Rudy, I have already won the case. He said, what do you mean the case is not hurt? I said, the day I decided not to remove the paintings, and to face the, that is the victory. Whether I win the case or lose it is immaterial. The moment I make the decision, I will not remove them. That is my victory. And I, I believe that what happens is done by others, but what happens, what I decide is more important than 
what happens to me? Yeah, in Kafesla, he was umr me when he was hardly 25 that he could make a decision not to be guided by a great man, but being guided by him, his own conviction. This is also something if there are many painters present. To tell them that just because an art dealer buys your paintings, it is not your victory. It, is, it may be your defeat. You know, then he will tell you what to do. And that is the worst thing that can happen to you. So success has to be evaluated. If you are working for yourself, that is your victory. My question is, what is the meaning of art from There's your no point meaning of view? To art. There is no meaning to art, except the meaning you give to art. Okay. <laughs> Sizigi uh, is about a, a complex programming, and that time uh, probably computers also did not exist at least in this part of the world. And that film he made and forgot. And now recently, what happened was in uh, this film was shown in Paris, and somebody he he asked him, a, a French man, then can you give me this film? He simply gave that film to him and forgot about it. And now. That film was shown in Paris along with the greatest of the filmmakers of the world. That person had kept it very safely. In the cinematic process. It was shown in the cinematic process with all the great masters of filmmaking. So, you can imagine his versatility, the, the range of his creativity. No, but uh, the thing is, I didn't know at that time. I had to wait 30 years to hear that this film is in cinematic process. <laughs> And at that time, um, the Museum of Modern Art here uh, said, if you'd like a copy of this film. So I opened that box with the film, it was all full of fungus. So I phoned up Kumar Shahani, who's a filmmaker, the friend of mine, to tell him, what shall I do? He said, I'll give an address, take this film there. If there's somebody who can save it, they can save it. So when I took the film, he said, I don't know if you can save it, but I'll have to put it in water. In, you know, wash it, you know, like a dirty cloth, you know, because there's so much fungus. I can, cannot promise you anything, come after one week. He washed it, he said the problem was drying it, you know. It did like a... <laughs> so he said, I have saved it. it. I have made a print. The print is not good, but you can see what it is. Then he, he reversed the film. It was, uh, you know, white, so he took a black thing and printed it in white. So you see it more clearly. I was really inspired by your paintings, that, And what I saw was that you've been using a lot of black. And what goes to your mind when you're putting in that black color? I mean, it's a really dark color. Is what you think is giving the depth to the painting, or what goes first, to your mind? First, black contains all the colors. If you mix yellow, red, and blue, you'll get black. And the Chinese have been working for thousands of years with black. Sir, I missed, uh, I missed out something about the concept of moon and sun together in a painting. So could you just answer once again? I mean, Sorry, will you please repeat that? Can you repeat When you got inspired by uh, Abhi Gyana Sakuntalam, so ah. I missed out something when you were saying because the uh, voice was very low. So I, I just wanted Sakuntala. to ask... I was referring to the, uh, you know, preface, uh, there's a, which Kalidas Abhi Gyana Sakuntalam, he says, Ye Dwe Kal Gita, these two controllers of time. He does not say sun and moon. Sarva Bija Prakriti. The, the source of all seed is water. So he first, the fire, the relation of man and God. The fire in a, in a marriage ceremony, you walk around the fire seven times. But many people don't know fire, the fire is Shiva himself. He is the witness, he is witnessing your marriage. So for each element, the five senses, then uh, Manas, Buddhi, Ankar, that means eight. Eight elements represent Shiva. It's a, it's a Shivaite landscape. Oh, Shiva, that's why I, said, I didn't want to use the word Shiva, not to get in trouble again like Hussein did, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so I call it a metascape. बहुत से सवाल पूछे जा चुके हैं, तो मैं सवाल नहीं पूछने वाला हूँ, अकबर साहब को सलाम करने वाला हूँ। किसी ने बहुत अच्छा कहा अकबर का मानी आप जानते हैं अकबर का मानी बड़ा होता है ग्रेट 
और जो छोटा होता है उसको असगर कहते हैं तो एक बड़ा अच्छा शेर है असगर गौंडवी एक शायर थे कि असगर को मिले लेकिन असगर को नहीं देखा इशार में सुनते हैं कुछ कुछ वो नुमायाँ हैं लगता है कि अपने शेरों में थोड़ी सी झलक मिलती है उनकी तो अकबर साहब से मिले तो कुछ आप देख नहीं सकते हैं इनकी पेंटिंग में इनकी झलक मिलती है एंड दैट इज अरेस्टिंग एब्सोलूटली अरेस्टिंग आई बीन अ ग्रेट एडमायरर ऑफ हिज फॉर अ वेरी वेरी लॉन्ग टाइम हमारे म्यूजियम में यूनिवर्सिटी म्यूजियम में एक छोटी सी तस्वीर है इनकी आई एम एम्बेरस टू से कि मैंने नहीं खरीदी थी वो वो मुल्क राज आनंद जो मेरे से पहले थे यहाँ पे यूनिवर्सिटी में उन्होंने खरीदी थी या इन्होंने उनको दी होगी तो इट्स वन ऑफ द मोस्ट ब्यूटिफुल वर्क दैट वी हैव इन दी एंटायर कलेक्शन ऑफ द यूनिवर्सिटी म्यूजियम ऑफ फाइन आर्ट्स कभी मौका हो तो देखिएगा जा कर के क्या है कि आई वॉज इन्होंने कहा कि he was arrested dikhaya inhone poster sa 1954 ka when he was arrested lekin ye hame kuch yakeen nahi tha ki ye khud bhi humko arrest karne wale hain there are about 300 odd people that are here in this particular hall at this moment what is it that strikes me most about akbar saab's paintings or akbar saab's personality and i was sitting here and i was looking at that photograph that divan has taken of him there is a, an expression of wonderment on his face it's not only a question of the certain frailty which comes with age and sight weakens but there is a an curiosity an extraordinary interest in what is going on what is going on in this world what is going on inside of human beings and that is what makes him stand out in a towering fashion in our own land but in the world of art in general when i was sitting here again and watching him and these slides were being shown in rapid succession i was completely riveted by the fact that he was looking at each work of art as if he seeing it for the first time and that takes a very very curious and a very sharp mind to get into that frame of mind one painting bora caption it was painted between 1975 to 2003 what does that mean 18 years did it take him 18 years to paint that particular work was he coming back to it again and again once twice three times and doing it at intervals as if dissatisfied with what he had done before things that we must really necessarily think about this ability at an advanced age at a level of maturity to be constantly asking questions is not given to every one of us and he is the one blessed with it and we are blessed by the fact that he shares this with us through his work and through his remarkably elegant words we were not able to hear much of him because he spoke very little but the passages which are which were shown on the in the form of slides had some very very sharp formulations form begets form if you put yellow and blue at a distance from each other and so on then the eye will take miles as it were to reach from one to the other whereas actually there is only a short distance of a few inches between the first color and the second and so on now these are not ordinary thoughts these are not things that you and i will ordinarily be able to think about but he is a thinking man and the thinking that we sense in his work is quite extraordinary another thing that i was very struck by hardly anybody smiles in any work of his 
everyone is brooding, everyone is thinking, everyone is inwardly <coughs> turned. There is some burden that everyone is bearing, as it were. Whether it is Judas and Christ, or whether it is a prophet, or it is an ordinary man and woman, even lovers do not seem to be too happy with each other. But the point is, what is the sum of our experience when we look at this, at the entirety of the work that he has been able to share with us? Despite the fact that everyone is thinking, despite the fact that everyone is brooding and inwardly turned and a kind of a sad city that in a certain sense he paints of men and women, what is it that elevates us all the same? The sum of it all is that after having seen this work, the body of his work, there's a sense of elation that I personally feel. And I'm quite certain that a great many of you also have felt the same sense of elation, of elevation, rising to a level that we did not believe belonged to us before we entered this particular hall. When Akbar Sahib speaks, but who was it, Amanadim Khasmi, who said, Har lafs me mazi ke kai geet gundhe hai, aur tarikh ki ek gunj hai goyai hamari. Jab hum bolte hai, toh tarikh bolti hai. Akbar sahab ne bahut dekha hai, bahut suna hai, bahut paint kiya hai, aur unka karam hai, unki nawazish hai, ki unho ne yaha kar ke yeh hum se share kiya. Mein sirf, दोस्ताना तौर से नहीं कह रहा हूँ, मैं इनका बहुत मदा हूँ, बहुत देर से मदा हूँ, और मुझे जाती तौर पे बहुत अच्छा लगा कि आपने ये वक्त निकाला और हमारे साथ ये शेयर किया। मैं क्या कहूँ? सवालों को जो जो पूछे गए हैं, तो अच्छे हैं, सवाल पूछना अच्छा है, लेकिन एक शेयर से मैं खत्म करता हूँ कि हर एक सवाल का शायद कोई जवाब तो हो हर एक सवाल तो मन्नत कशे जवाब नहीं हर सवाल जवाब नहीं मानता है मांगता नहीं है तो कुछ अच्छे सवाल कुछ ऐसे ही सवाल लेकिन आपने बहुत पेशन से सुना कुछ हमसे शेयर किया बहुत करम बहुत शुक्रिया थैंक यू फॉर कमिंग थैंक यू प्रोफेसर बीएन गोस्वामी एस एवर ही इज अनदर लेजेंड अमंग्स अस एंड वी आर स and Akbar Sahib ka to kya shukriya da karein ke is shahar ko jaysi inho ne kaha nawaza hai inho ne aur is tarha se, is pyaar se jaysi yeh aay hai is ka mujhe ahsas hai, mujhe malum hai ke inho ne baghair koi airs ya koi nakhra ya kuch bhi dikhaye woh aise aay hai jaysi koi mandir mein aata hai aaj sara din inho ne ghum ghum ke shahar bhi dekha hai yeh wala museum bhi dekha, Punjab University wala museum bhi dekha उसके बाद इतनी एनर्जी है कि अभी भी हमारे साथ ये अपनी यादें, अपना काम, अपने एक्सपीरियंसेस शेयर करने को बैठे हैं और इसके बाद और भी बैठेंगे हमारे साथ शाम को जब हम अकेले होंगे और भी बातें सुनाएंगे हमारे साथ इनकी एक पेंटिंग जैसे प्रोफेसर ने कहा इस म्यूजियम में भी है एंड इट्स अ लार्ज कैनवस ऑलमोस्ट सिक्स फीट बाई सिक्स फीट कैनवस विच इज़ ऑन डिस्प्ले इफ समी डजन गो टू द म्यूजियम उनको वैसे इंटरेस्ट अभी तक ना हो तो आज के बाद मैं चाहूँगा कि आप ज़रूर जाके देखें इनका काम तो देखें ही देखें बाकी म्यूज़ियम में जो गंधारा स्कल्पचर या मिनेचर पेंटिंग है उसको भी देखें बहुत सारे लोग मैं इसलिए ये बोल रहा हूँ कॉलेज ऑफ आर्ट के स्टूडेंट्स को मैं मिलता हूँ पूछता हूँ कि आप कितने बार म्यूज़ियम गए हैं वो फिफ्थ ईयर में पढ़ रहे होते हैं कहते हम दो बार गए हैं उनसे किसी पेंटिंग की बात करो किसी स्कल्पचर की बात करो दे डोंट नो से सच अ ट्रेजर ट्रू देर इन द मिस्ट द सिटी एंड वी डोंट रिली डोंट टेक एडवांटेज